Welcome to Game Devs Play Games, where we play games about game design, and today we're playing uh, Bastion. Bastion. One of my personal favorite games, made by Tribute Games, which now they just announced. By the way, we're probably going to talk a little bit about E3, so sorry if this is like, if you're watching this way back. Yeah. But I've been following following it like crazy. Um, Supergiant just announced their newest, well, not just announced, but they showed off like a new trailer for Pyre, which I'm oh, super pumped really? about. Yeah, dude. Oh, that's badass. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're going to play Bastion. I don't know if this is going to be a full playthrough. That'll be up to you guys to vote at the end if you want to see more. So let's jump into this. Let's do it. All right. So this is Supergiant's first games. Did I call them Tribute at first? You, did, you definitely called them Tribute. Tribute's um, my other favorite game studio. <laughs> Well, sorry, Tribute, but it's for the Supergiant. Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't yeah, this so voiceover this so good. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up. <laughs> so if you don't know, you guys watching this, everyone <laughs> agreed to go in case of trouble. One of Bastion's like largest factors Ground that kind of made it stand out from the crowd was way. its uh. He don't stop to wonder why. Voiceover narration. I was gonna say dynamic narration. It's not. It's not quite dynamic. I wouldn't quite exact. I wouldn't call it dynamic exactly, but it uh it responds to the player's actions. Yes, which is so cool. Like I mean, yeah, how the field kind of grows as we go. If I don't walk that way, it's gonna stop. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I go, it's just it's fun. Yeah, we'll have to see if I can toss some subtitles or something on here in part two. I don't know if they do have subtitles for the narration. Yeah, I'm sure they do. We'll, mm. we'll we'll try to talk to not talk over the the voiceover too much, but I mean, That's we're so interesting. <laughs> no, ma'am, it's a gas fella, forced out from underground. But yeah, the the, the voiceover it work is is good. astounding in this game. It starts the you know, it really is. And you know, what I'm really interested in just like when you first start playing this game, it's the way the like 2D and 3D esque shading kind of work together. Oh, it's especially because it's like, it's it's very like hand painted kind of feel yes. like the textures, um, and most of the objects in the game are are very much that painted feel. And then it's I think it's only the characters that are actually three D models. I could be wrong, um, but even they kind of feel painted too because their texture work on them was really good, and it's got that kind of cell shaded quality and all that stuff too. So I, obviously I've played this game before, um, I've and I've, a little bit of this I've, game. I've beaten this over and over again because I can't stop playing this game. Um, but so Gigarius has played this, if only because we actually recorded, I think what five episodes <laughs> of, of Bastion previously, and all of the footage got corrupt. So. Yeah, it was super cool. <laughs> like, if there's one thing that we wanted to happen, was all of that to become corrupt. Yeah, so he, he's gonna at least Sometimes know a little bit for a, at least the first couple of episodes, which yeah, I guess yeah. it, on the plus side that means we're gonna get through things probably a little bit faster it's than theory, we would have but otherwise. I'm still gonna get <laughs> around a little bit, you know. So long as you don't keep <laughs> accidentally hitting the uh, the potion button. Well, well, now that I'm not using the steam controller since you broke it. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm uh, sure you guys would be happy to hear that, yeah, since we right. always suck when we use the Steam uh, controller. We are. We're just so bad <laughs> with it, but it's such a cool controller. You know, we never did that uh, Intangible requested that we do a special episode with the Steam controller, talking about, like, why it's good design or why it's bad design and how it works. <laughs> and uh, we never got around to doing that. Inside, so yeah, that might not be the end of the world. I think, I think the Steam controller does have its, like, benefits. Um, with like how you can map it out, but as we were talking about before we started recording, there really isn't all that many games well, that like that actively that support that it. Actively support it, which no. is my fear with all of this VR stuff coming out, mm. especially like absolutely all this stuff going on in E3 right now, where Sony just announced that the they're they're releasing like their big VR thing. Everything and, is VR. Yeah, was it coming out this October or something? Yeah, oh, dude. I use my shield. I special delivery. Yes. I'm excited, but I'm worried that they're flooding the market with too many VR products too Dude, quickly. that's what I'm worried about, because what, they announced, um, and it's so dumb, because they announced, like, the, the, the new Batman game, or the Arkham, I think it's literally just Arkham Asylum ball. VR. <laughs> yeah, that seems to be the big thing right now. It's it's even like the Rogue Squadron yeah, VR, Yeah, they, they, or, they're uh, calling it a Star Wars mission or something, yeah. 
Oh man. Yeah, you know, it's just... Squirts, I mean, don't get me forward. wrong, the first chance I get to get an Oculus Rift, I'm probably gonna get that one first. Oh, absolutely, the Oculus Rift is big old boss, man. I love the, the Oculus kid. Rift. Especially because the one for Steam is like $800. Yeah. I, the HTC or whatever it's called. Yeah, it's a little pricey. Yeah, I mean, maybe if we made money on the show. Yeah, right? Hey, so uh, you guys can fix that, right? People, just, uh, uh, give us money. Um, well, I'll start a Twitch account and I'll do some sexy dance moves for you. Ooh, it's a, I might, I might drop. chip in on that. Yeah. I mean, what? Oh, um, I, I, I absolutely chip in on that. <laughs> Ooh, baby. Good look hey, I mean, some people are into the big guys. Uh, everyone should be in the big So, so we should probably talk a little bit about Bastion. We probably should. Sorry this one started off weird. But, uh, basically what's happened so far is the kid wakes up. We're basically in a post-apocalyptic setting, right? And... The kid doesn't necessarily even know why everything is the way he is, but he knows one thing. He knows he needs to get to the Bastion. And as far as us as the players know, we don't really understand what the Bastion is. We just know it's important. Um, and so, other than that, every other like bit of dialogue or narration that we've encountered is basically just kind of setting the scene. Like, it's it's kind of showing us how the kid is familiar with the setting. He knows some of the people that are died and have turned to ash. Um, you know, some of these weapons appear, and he's like, "Oh, I know what that is," because you know these people use it, like the breaker bow. Like, oh, the breakers were awesome. Um, how do I do that cool flick of the wrist thing? Like, counterattack. So you, yeah, you, you pull out the shield, yeah, right before it hits you, which I. So after we recorded this and last time, and we lost all the footage, I actually went in and I just I played the whole game in one sitting, because I. Uh, can. I just got really excited about it. I, I honestly truly love this well, game. I thought I had this game and I don't. Because you're terrible. Um, and I was super bummed because I wanted to play it after, <laughs> after I started doing this. I was like, I Except need this. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I did a full playthrough on my own just for funsies because I got put in the mood after our recording session. And uh, I I totally forgot how much that counterattack was my combat style in this game. I use it for like 50% of my attacks. such a cool thing. I should probably do something to keep myself alive. And, and you guys will see as we play through this, we're probably going to at least do five episodes on this. So yeah, we're, we're going to get far enough to see right some of the other the weapons arsenal. and, yes, and kind of see the level up. If we system. don't, I'll be really surprised because that means that I had beginner's luck <laughs> hardcore. We're, we're already way farther than we were last time, too. Oh, yeah, within the beginning. Absolutely. I think, this took, <laughs> I think we began the second episode here. Uh, so okay, this is these are the spirits, which basically just means alcohol. Um, yeah. But uh, they they they're passive effects, right? So right off the bat, it's things like plus ten percent health, plus ten percent chance of crit hit, and then absorb and then, stray fragments. And fragments are those little blue things. I'm gonna that, go with the health. I know me. I need health. Yeah, and I think the critical hit one is only when you're at the full health. Yeah. Um, which I actually. I think when we first recorded this, I was like, you should probably go with the 10% health. And then when I played it, I was like, 10% crit all the way. Yeah. Because you don't get crit otherwise, otherwise unless you have right. a weapon that has it. Well, I think I like the weapon choice. The bow and arrow is a little, I like it a little better. Oh, than, dude. Uh, Fang repeater. The Kale Hammer and the Breaker's Bow combo is like a duo meant to be. I love, the, so the bow was my ranged weapon of choice for my entire playthrough. Oh yeah. Like even after you get some of the big nasty weapons that are just terrifying, I was, I'm still all about that bow. Cause you can upgrade the, the pull speed. Oh yeah, okay. And, and the bow is already really powerful. So you upgrade the pull speed enough, upgrade like, the damage once and Some then you are set you can like one shot most things right, let me not mess this up like it last time oh yeah, yeah when, I, when i played this last time i didn't even notice like the little popcorn machines yep until you point them out <laughs> every time you had to repoint them out if i'm not mistaken you're like hey, and i'm the colorblind the, one don't about those popcorn machines it's like what, what? oh those things <laughs> right and only i was getting fragments left and right because of that um, also, I don't know if you've noticed this, um, but when you pick up those little apples and stuff, it actually refills your health. Oh, that's super cool. So, like, the potions in those little, like, potion wells, I guess, 
aren't the only ways to recover health in this game. That's not cool, man. That's not cool. I did find... So, um, we, I, we failed to mention it at the time, but... On his way. The Bastion's real close now. Mm. So good. Uh, so we failed to mention it earlier, but you picked Oops. up a memento, was it called? I think it was a memento. I don't remember what it was. Some kind of, like, memento-like artifact, right? It, it was basically like, here's this item, it has no actual function, um, but it has, you know, plot significance. Um, oh, yeah. I forget what the point I was going to make with that. Oh! Um, well, maybe those... You can't, now that I think about That's it. Right. But there's... I, I did this part. Last time we recorded, you were asking if you could accidentally like leave something behind. It so like that's something heavy, down. right? Yeah. That's Snow that's used in the upgrading of weapons. Yeah, can you leave it behind? You can leave it behind. Um, and I don't think you're you totally lose out if you do because there's a building that you can get where I think you can purchase anything that you missed. Oh. I think I'm well, not 100 percent sure. Cool way to like make up for it, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Not totally out of luck. Now, for the mementos, I don't think you can with those. That makes sense. But since they don't have any mechanical value, oh, it's God. it's okay in, in my opinion. Right. But I, I do think it's interesting. I mean, do you think that the player should be penalized for missing something on the stage, or do you think it's okay to, like... I feel like they're already being positive that to pay for it, you know? It's true, yeah, especially because those shards are... are not well i guess they become easier and easier to get over time but like i feel like throughout my whole playthrough i still pretty much was always riding at zero shards because i'd spend them all right away um but i i think that's an interesting design discussion either way yeah absolutely I, in, in my personal opinion like I, said, I feel like you're already paying for it by um having to pay for it i think that's a good way to at least they feel like you're not totally up poop yeah, creek without it. Yeah, I, I guess the counterpoint would be that it devalues the time spent searching for it in the level itself. That's for, I guess it depends what the cost of it is. If the cost is mm. too low, then I think I see your point. But if it's not, if it's a high cost, which I think I would personally make it a high cost, because, hey, that's supposed to be, like, uh, you know, missable. Right. Like, you know. Yeah, no, that's that's totally fair. So that's how I feel about it, at least. Um, Find well, the core to the wharf district. Okay, so before you grab that core, mm -hmm. it's in the episode here. Okay. We're gonna pick off here in the next episode. Um, we're gonna at least do five. I mean, you'll you'll see in the little health bar below the screen um, how many episodes we've done. Yeah. Um, but it's if you want to see more Bastion, definitely vote for more because this is my favorite game. I will play this over and, and over I and am over again. Loving it just after <laughs> like we're talking literally an hour of playing all together, like. Yeah, sorry this episode was a little scatterbrained too. We had a lot of computer problems and I was already scatterbrained We're before we even started this. Group, but you guys love us. We love you. It's fine. <laughs> we'll get over it. We'll come back next time even stronger than before. Yeah. Yeah. So question of the day to you guys. I'm going to pose you the same question I posed this guy. Do you think that it's okay for the player to purchase um, like upgrade related items in a shop after the math if they miss it in the level because we can't go back to these levels after we've completed them um so do you think that it devalues the the levels themselves does it dissuade exploration or do you think it's a it's a good thing in that it allows the player to like keep up with the scale of the game like the difficulty absolutely well guys remember to like comment and subscribe and please vote for the next game you want to see us play if you want more bash it's up there if you want to see Chris and I play a couple of other cool games, they're up there as well. So we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye, guys.